Welcome to Now in Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. In this episode, we're covering the new developer-powered CTS, composed library versioning, stability and animated content, coroutine test migration, intent filters, and a bunch of stuff from Google Play and Android X. The Compatibility Test Suite, or CTS, is being enhanced with CTSD, a new test suite that is built and run by developers in the community like you. You can build and contribute test cases to CTSD to help catch pain points that you are seeing in the field, places where a device behavior doesn't match the Android public APIs and the Android compatibility definition document. Anyone can run the CTSD suite to verify compatibility, since it's open sourced and available on AOSP. If you're interested in learning more, we have tutorials on contributing to and utilizing CTSD. We announced that the various Jetpack Compose libraries will move to independent versioning schemes, and this all will start with the Compose compiler, because it is tightly coupled with the Kotlin version. The Compose compiler 1.2 brings support for Kotlin 1.7, while being both backwards and forwards compatible with the Compose UI libraries and the Compose Runtime library. You can upgrade your Compose compiler to 1.2 stable and use Kotlin 1.7 while leaving your other Compose libraries at their current version, and this is just the first step in decoupling versioning for the different composed library groups. In the latest edition of Notes from Google Play, we touched on the Play Integrity API, the Data Safety section, the Privacy Sandbox on Android, and the newly launched Google Play SDK Index, which provides data and insights about over 100 of the most widely used commercial SDKs. We covered new subscription capabilities that allow you to create multiple base plans and offers for each subscription, as well as the option to lower prices starting at the equivalent of five US cents to adapt to local purchasing power. We shared the story of of Olio, a community-driven app that is fighting to reduce food waste, began the Google Play Coffee Break series with Jim Jump Studios, one of the finalists in last year's Indie Games Accelerator and Indie Games Festival program, and launched the hashtag WeArePlay campaign that celebrates the global community of people behind apps and games. We've introduced a new test in the Google Play pre-launch report that runs accessibility checks on a device switch to dark theme. Now, this can detect color contrast issues that make it difficult to differentiate text and icons from a background. You can also use the screenshot generated during the test to check that all elements in your UI have dark theme styling applied correctly. The performance tips to achieve app excellence video covered five app performance issues along with the tools that Android Studio and Google Play Console provide to help you diagnose and troubleshoot them. Now this week in articles, Todd covered behavior changes with intent filters in Android 13, which now delivers intents that specify actions and originates from external apps to export a component if and only if the intent matches its declared intent filter elements. Rebecca covered using animated content to transition between different composables with a smoother and more custom transition effect. Even the default behavior of animated content can make a big difference to the look and feel of your app without much effort. Ben did a detailed exploration of how Compose determines the stability of each parameter of your composables to see what can be skipped during recomposition, including using compiler reports to determine what stability is being inferred about your classes. For example, since collection classes like list, set, and map are not guaranteed to be immutable, using Kotlin X immutable classes or annotating your classes as at immutable or at stable can allow Compose to skip recompositions, and there's lots more in the post. Kotlin X Coroutines 1.6 introduces a set of new testing APIs, and the previous testing APIs are now deprecated. Martin talked about how we've migrated some of our own samples to the new APIs, covering a bunch of the necessary work for most Android projects. Now, since the last episode of Now in Android, there have been a lot of stuff that's been released in Android X, and here's what's newly stable. Compose Compiler 1.2 now supports Kotlin 1.7 and independent Compose library versioning. Lifecycle 2.5 has an awesome update to add creation extras to the view model provider factory subclass, and this simplifies gaining access to an application or save state handle. Now we've also added the get state flow API to save state handle and much more. Activity 1.5 adds component dialog, and this includes an on-back press dispatcher, as well as modular callback interfaces and a stateless view model provider factory in component activity. Fragment 1.5 adds creation extras integration, component dialog integration, and refactors saved instance state. 
Navigation 2.5 provides a stateless view model provider factory, requires AGP 7.0.4 for safe args, and adds support for the namespace build.gradle attribute to be used instead of application ID. Camera 1.1 1 .1 adds video capture use cases, YV to RGB conversion, rotation, multi-window mode support, a camera state API, JPEG output for on-image captured callback, experimental camera filter and exposure compensation APIs, and much more. Save state 1.2 has been rewritten in Kotlin, which causes a few source incompatible changes. But it allows early attachment of the save state registry via perform attach, and you can now retrieve a previously registered save state provider from a save state registry via get save state provider. That's it for this time. With CTSD, independent versioning of Compose libraries, Compose stability, custom Compose animated content, coroutine test migration, Android 13 intent filters, and a bunch of stuff from Play and Android X. Come back here soon for the next update from the Android Developer Universe.